That's right, you guessed it. I played football, and you know what they called me out on the field? They called me the X Factor. You know why? Because I was the most important player on the field. Whenever they needed help or whenever they needed to score a touchdown to change the momentum of the game, they called on for the X Factor, and I would get the ball and score a touchdown. So now, I'm going to show you what we can use using the X to help us when we're factoring in math. It's a little technique, but go ahead, pay attention to this. It's really cool. So if they ask you to go ahead and factor the trinomial and you have something like this, the first thing you want to notice is that there is no coefficient. So there can't be a coefficient in front of this x squared, but it could be x squared, it could be a squared, it could be any variable squared. There can't be a number in front of there. So now once we see that, we call upon the x. So the x will be our momentum changer for this. So I want you to go ahead and draw a big x right here. And what you do now is you drop down this number. So you drop down the 13 and we put it right here. And then you take this 42 and you put it right here. Now, you want to pay attention to the signs as well. This is a positive 13, so let's make sure we put that there. And this is a positive 42, so we want to put that there as well. Okay, now that we did that, we realize because since there's no coefficient in front of this variable squared, we call on for the x, and that's the most important thing that you do. Now we have to ask ourselves, what two numbers add? So they have to add to positive 13 and multiply to a positive 42. This is the toughest part, but trust me, it beats guess and check. So now, if we know our multiplication facts, we would know that 6 times 7 gives us 42, and it has to be a positive 42. So it would be a positive 6 and a positive 7. Why are they both positives? Well, because it also has to add to a positive 13, right? So now, we know that positive 6 plus positive 7 adds to a 13, and positive 6 times positive 7 adds to 42. So now we're ready for our answer. So what's our answer going to be? Let me show you. You take whatever this variable squared is right here, and you go ahead and take the square root of it. So x squared would be just x. And now, you would go ahead and put x plus 6, and then you put another x in the other binomial, x plus 7. Where did these numbers come from? Well, I just took plus 6 and I put it there, and I took the plus 7 and I put it there. Or, the positive 6 here and the positive 7 there. Now, a lot of questions I get asked are, what happens to this x right here? You don't have to worry about that because we're factoring. When you FOIL everything out here, you'll notice that once you combine like terms, you'll get that as your answer again. So when you do this, you just take the square root, put one here, put one there, and then the numbers go here, and now you got the answer. So now I'm getting a little excited, we're getting ready to go, and let's do some more problems so I can show you why the X factor is the most important part in factoring. All right, I'm getting pumped up for this, guys. Guess what? Because now we're going to go ahead and factor this. But what do we call on? There's not a number. There's no coefficient in front of this variable squared, so we call on for the x. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's draw our x here, because it's asking us to factor, right? And we just drop down the number. So that would be a minus 3, right? Because of this minus sign, so it's really a negative 3. And let's put add right here, because we know that the numbers have to add to that. And let's put this minus 28, or a negative 28, right here. Good. So now, we have to figure this out. Remember, the number has to multiply to a negative 28. Well, here's the tip for you guys. If both of these are negative, and please write this down on your notes, because this is a great play for you. If both of these are negative, then one number has to be a positive, and one number has to be a negative. Okay? And now, if it adds to a negative, the bigger number will always be the negative, and the smaller number will always be the positive, if where we add, the number is a negative right there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What are the multiplication facts, are the numbers that give you 28 when we multiply them? Let's see. We can do 2 times 14, right? 2 times 14, but if we did 
2 plus negative 14, that would give us a negative 12. So that's not the answer, right? So that doesn't work. What if we did 4 times 7? So we'll do 4 times 7. That gives us our 28. But remember, the signs have to be different. So if we did negative 4 plus 7, that would give us 3, but it wouldn't give us a negative 3. So what do we have to do? We have to do negative 7 plus 4. Oh, that gives us negative 3. And if we multiply negative 7 times a positive 4, that would give us a negative 28. So that works. So let's go ahead and put our positive 4 and our negative 7, and let's check that again. Remember, everything has to work out here. 4, positive 4 times negative 7 gives us a negative 28. Positive 4 plus negative 7 gives us a negative 3. So now it works out. So what do we do? Well, all we do now is we take the square root of a squared, which is just a. So we put 1 there, and we go ahead and put a, and since it's a positive 4, it would be a plus 4. And now we put another a here, so it would be a, and then we put minus 7, since that's a minus 7 right there. And that's our answer. Do we worry about this a right here? No. Why? Because when we FOIL it out to check, our answer will end up in this trinomial. But when we're factoring, just go ahead and worry about this right here. That's why you want to call on for the X.